Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Fighters and promoters, contact us today for your insurance needs. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. This week, we'll debate the top five pound-for-pound -pound female fighters of all time, preview the very exciting KSW 20, and another Dirty Dozen Clip of the Week finalist. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, stand in for King Leonidas, the movie 300, Casey Oxenheim. Well, I think what you're saying here is that while MMA Inside the Cage is not the largest media outlet, we fought tooth and nail each week to bring the best to the viewers. No, I think that might be right. Do you want to go ahead and say it? This is Sparta? That's not going to happen. You don't want to do it? You sure? Okay, well, big weekend for Strike Force last week, and that that's how we kick off the MMA news flurry. UFC's little brother or little sister promotion, in this case, put on another great show, not just with the main event, but some good stuff on the undercard. 205 prospect Ovince St. Preux came out firing with a tremendous KO in the third round over TJ Cook. I know the Musasi loss was tough for him, but I think he kind of made a statement with this fight. Well, he came out with a vengeance over a very, very game TJ Cook. He kept the pressure on. He started very, very strong, and he mm -hmm. finished even stronger. So big things for Ovince. I think he's uh, ready to move to take that next step. Now. I think so, too. It'll be to see who they have for his next opponent. Ronda Rousey's last victim, Misha Tate, had a war with veteran Julie Kedzie, and it ends with an arm bar of all submissions in the third. Casey, let's talk about Julie Kedzie, who just kind of brought the game, and then Misha Tate for weathering the storm and yeah. still getting the win. Well, it took Misha a few minutes to, to really get in there and get her game and get the ball rolling because uh, Kedzie, big bombs. She has very, very significant power, and Misha Tate really looked to be in some trouble there in the first round. Uh, finished the first round with a good submission attempt and then goes on to win with an arm bar. So huge props to Misha for getting back on track. But she does say that, you know, following this in the press conference, that she is not ready to go ahead and, and challenge for the title. She wants to make a better performance before then. So uh, I'm anxious to see what, what Misha does. And I, would love to see, I would love to see the Marlis Coonan rematch, man. I thought that was a great fight that we saw. Let's go ahead and check out Julie Kedzie right after the fight. You know, was there any time in the fight that you actually thought you were going to finish her? Yes, actually two times. In the first round, I thought I was going to finish her. I saw her head snap back, and definitely in the third round in that final kick. And if I had done what I was doing earlier, backed off or reestablished a tighter position, you know, I really felt like my um, my wrestling defense shined through today. I've been working on that forever. And if I had just just at the end there, darn it. Then he moved to the main event, which automatically has hype because Ronda Rousey is involved. And I really didn't like the whole I'm going to kill her stuff about Sarah Kaufman. I didn't think it was real classy. But as far as the fight goes, once Rousey gets in there, she put Kaufman away very quick. I, 55 seconds quick, Casey. I called that so strong. I knew that was going to happen. I knew that uh, uh, Kaufman had been arm barred before. And with Ronda Rousey being an Olympian uh, in judo, she, she's going to get the fight to the ground at some point unless she got caught. Man, she is really on a roll. This is a phenom, and, and no doubt you're going to see her in the UFC. She'll be the first lady to ever headline the UFC, hopefully against Cyborg. Next event for Strike Force, Saturday, September 29th, Melendez versus Healy. I can't wait to see that one. Check out StrikeForce.com and Sports.Show.com for more information on that fight. Next up, former Strike Force standout Jason Mayhem Miller. Kind of been on a roller coaster, a lot of lows, more than highs. He was arrested for breaking into the church, spraying the walls down, then being found in his birthday suit. Suit. Well, he posted bail. He's out of lockup. Now he says everything is fine, Casey. Can you make any sort of sense of the mayhem situation? First off, I wonder what kind of cufflinks he was wearing with that birthday suit, bro. <laughs> but you can never can tell with, with mayhem. You know, um, Dana White and him, they were going back and forth on Twitter the day before. Um, it could have been as, as simple as a hard knot of party and turned crazy. And Very mayhem, crazy. it it always gets crazy. <laughs> it's mayhem, but I'll tell you what, we talked to one of his strike force opponents, Tim Moab Stout, and we kind of got his take on the situation. I hate to see it, you know, obviously he's got uh, a stability problem, so I hope he gets stable because he does have a lot of talent, and I think that was a lot of the a lot of the reason for his performances his last couple of fights. I don't know him personally, I mean, closest I ever got to him is when he's punching me in the face, so I mean, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think, you know, he's not always been like that, but yeah. Especially at church. Last week, we had 12 knockouts from all over the world for the Clip of the Week contest. And I'll tell you, the voting was fierce. The prize pack was big. And the winner is, let's get the drum roll going. Bruce Boynton from New England Fights, a tremendous spinning heel kick. Check out New England Fights at MMA-FightNight.com. Well, we have 12 more Clip of the Week finalists, another dirty dozen. Tell them what they can win, Casey. Well, you will win an Elevation Training Mass 2.0, the Gamma Lab Shaker Cup and Sample of the Pre-Workout Formula, a copy of the Hammer on DVD, and clothing from Vamp, Fi Gear, Versahi, and of course, Hunter MMA. Well, top five pound-for-pound pound women on the other side, but now our first four finalists for Clip of the Week. <laughs> You 
might try to take this fight to the ground. Maybe looking to get another the ground. He's eating some punches right now. Oh, oh, wow. That's all she wrote. Saw a right hand, and Danny Burris did not. Southpaw stance for Roman. Immediately comes out stalking him with his chin down, tight boxing stance. Loading up on that big left. Big Lands left a huge hand. left. That's going to do it. He just walks off. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by visiting MMAinsidethecagetv.com and click Get On Air. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. It's second round action. And Casey, what do you got a little product from Gamma Labs? Got, a little, got right? the best in pre training formula here from the Gamma Labs. I'm thinking about mixing a little bit of it up mm -hmm. in your coffee cup in the morning before we go out to do interviews and see what transpires. I don't know if it's for that, but I'll give it a shot, anyways. <laughs> GammaLabs.net for more information on that. And of course, they can win that in the prize package. Now, we still have a full preview of KSW to come in the third round. But right now, what well, we've already covered Ronda Rousey's dismissal of Sarah Kaufman last weekend. And that brings us to our next top five the top five pound for pound female fighters of all time. And that doesn't just mean the current day, that means since the inception of women's MMA and each fighter's dominance of their era. Now let's go through the top five here, Casey, see if we see eye to eye. Who do you have at number five? Number five, Chris Cyborg Santos, wow, okay. who, you know, up until very recently was considered the pinnacle of women's MMA. Uh, of course, got popped for those PEDs here recently. And okay, it, she, has a lot a big, she has a lot of big wins, but I'd have her a little bit higher. Why do you have her quite so low? That's what I want the to know. The thing is, is she's 10 and one. Okay. Okay. There are people that are higher on this list overall that, that actually have bigger wins. Of course, the only fight that really she won in her weight division uh, was Gina Carano. It was mm -hmm. a big win. But Marlos Kunin, the, the victory over Marlos Kunin, was, you know, Marlos Kunin was a 135-pounder. So she was stepping up to 145 to face uh, Cyborg at that time. So really, if you go back and you look, a lot of the rest of those opponents are really, they, they don't have that kind of uh, um, uh, pedigree. record. Yeah, yeah, they don't have that pedigree. Well, if she was to beat Rousey, where would she go? I think she would go number one, number two. I, I think that the fact that these two are hyped so strongly that they could either you know, pedal straight up to the top or or get really, really close. Well, there we go. Number four, who do you got? Ronda Rousey. Whoa, okay. Everybody's going to have a fit over it, but the bottom line is that she is 6-0. and oh. Okay, just like when you're talking about Tiger Woods when he first came into the, the game of golf. Everybody, everybody said his dominance was going to uh, cause him to exceed Jack Nicklaus and Arnold Palmer overnight, uh, but but it takes years uh, and, you know, to, to create that sort of uh, mainstay in the fights. Uh, and, and so uh, he, he, with Ronda Rousey, I think that she, with one or two fights, just like with Cyborg, if she were to defeat Cyborg, I think she could usurp the number one position in actually take the top. But does she list. have the best arm bar? At, I think that I think that Ronda Rousey has the strongest start of any female fighter, female athlete that, it, that has ever come on the scene of all time. So, I think that's a good so, call. So yeah, very in the future, I, I think that she very much could could rule the roost. Next, number three. Okay, number three, Marlos Kunin. All right. And I'm going to say this because Marlos Kunin is one of those fighters who uh, really started in the golden age. She is like the Babe Ruth uh, of women's mixed martial arts, starting in the year 2000. She did a whole lot. She she competed uh, in the first 16 
woman uh, one night tournament. Yeah. Uh, she uh, and and then of course she went on to win the Strike Force Women's Title in the current age uh, mm-hmm. of mixed martial arts. So really, she's been there. Uh, the reason she's not number one is because there were losses throughout. Even in in her prime, uh, there, there was that early uh, a loss to Erin Tohill. Uh, later on, of course, she she lost to Misha Tate. So there are uh, you know losses here and there. She is fourteen and five, but man, she is a solid number three. You know, she's list. my favorite. Yeah. yeah we've We've seen that. We've seen that firsthand. (laughs) Number two, where are we going with it? Tara La Rosa. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people don't like Tara because she is very, very vocal. She's been all over the forum. She always was. But the bottom line is she has a 15-fight winning streak uh, through a portion of her career that Mm -hmm. spanned eight years and really positioned herself as the Bodog champion, women's champion, which was at that time considered the pinnacle title for women Mm -hmm. uh, in that era. She was... Uh, noted as the pound for pound number one women's fighter of all time in that era Mm -hmm. and for me really really solidifies her number two position the reason she's not number one is because of her recent drop off Uh, Marlis Conan you you saw moving into strike force uh, and and later on you'll see our number one who actually moved on and is still currently competing and we're actually going to see Tara LaRosa on the next Invicta card which is going to be exciting then we go to number one who do you have the number one pound for pound of all time Nagumi Fuji of course 25 and 2, an outstanding record. She was utterly dominant throughout her entire career, only recently losing after 22 straight wins. She, of course, lost to the oversized Zola Grigel. And it, it, you know, really, Megumi Fuji is respected by all women fighters, all fans alike. She is really something spectacular. And even to this day, um, you, you have to take that, that dominance into perspective and put her number one. Well, there we go. There's the top five. Do you have anybody for honorable mention that I you do. want? I to... do. I've got three. Okay. Uh, Zola Grigel it tops off the list for me because, she, of course, she's the first person that beat Megumi Fuji, also former Bellator champion prior to her knee injury, but that knee injury did keep her out of competition here recently and, and out of the top five. Now, Misha Tate, of course, is the, is the next one. She, uh, former Strike Force champion, also, she actually beat Zola yeah. uh, in, in a really tough fight. And, uh, you know, the, the, the problem is is that she attained the title and then almost instantly lost it to, to Ronda Rousey. And so that, once again, dropped her out of that spot. And then finally, just Jessica Aguilar, who, who's been around but has recently come on very strong, once again, dominantly defeated Megumi Fuji and really is making that rise to, to that next pinnacle. I think that uh, Jessica Aguilar could be one of those that actually steps up into there, uh, into that top five list and, and really showcases later on in her career. Well, I think you also got Miku from Japan mm-hmm. that comes to mind for me. And then I'll tell you what, if you're talking about Ronda Rousey, you got to talk about Sarah McMahon. She's still undefeated as well. And that could maybe be the biggest test in Rousey's career. We'll have to see in the future. We're going to break down KSW 20 that's going down on September. September 15th after the break, but first it's four more finalists for Clip of the Week. Sometimes, uh, you know, strength alone can play a mental game. Oh, that's a KO. It can play a pretty physical game, too. My goodness. That, that was big. That was a huge KO right there. For this fight, just as everybody is coming in here, a lot of emotion, obviously. What are you, what are you thinking right now as far as advancing and moving on in this tournament? What I'm thinking right now, there's a lot of people after this fight are coming up to me saying, do the right thing. Win the crowd. That's what you want to do, but I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to tell you why. Not a lot of people gave me a chance when they found out that I'm a professional wrestler stepping into the MMA cage. And I said, don't worry about it. Stop talking. I'll stop talking when I'm ready. How's that?
fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by visiting MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and click Get On Air. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Third round time, time to impress the judges. KSW 20 coming up in a few weeks. And as always, Martin Lewandowski, everybody involved, has cut together for a great card on September 15th. Outstanding production and a fan base that just don't stop. I think so. They have to be top three in Eastern Europe by far. The undercard looks great, but everybody's talking about the top three fights. Marcin Rosowski taking out Jerome LeBanner. This fight was supposed to happen at 18. Valentin Overeem stepped in, ends up beating Rosowski, but now we get to see Rosowski, LeBanner. Who do you think wins this? I'm taking Rosowski on this one. I think he is the wolf, although he did drop the loss to Overheem recently. I think that he's going to have an edge on LeBanner, who's aging, but still a great. Uh, it'll be a great fight. The big man, Marios Pujanowski, or as he is affectionately known here in the States, Pudzo, will take out Christos, the mad Greek Palafis. A lot of people were disappointed for the opponent for Pujanowski. Wanted something a little bit more high profile. Palafis is no joke. King of the cage veteran. Four straight wins. TKO. First round. He's going to bring it. Well, I, I think this is how greats a lot of times are born. You, they, they bring him in to get beat by Pujanowski, but if this turns out to be a game fight, and Pujanowski has shown holes in his armor in the past, mm -hmm. I think this could be a very game fight and a great opportunity. So who's your call? Palafis or Pujanowski? Palafis. All right, there take it Palafis. is. Finally, the main event is going to be a barn burner. One of the franchise players for KSW, Jean Blockowitz, will take on former UFC slugger Houston Alexander. Blockowitz is on a three-fight winning streak, and Alexander is on a two-fight losing streak to Gilbert Yivel and Steve Bossy. Now, betting money has to be on Blockowitz. How do you see this one going well, now, partner? Last week, you know, I, I took it for Houston Alexander. I just wanted to see maybe a, a crazy stir come up and, and Houston take one. I've been thinking about it all week long. I, I don't know. I might have to change my mind. I think Blockwood's going to take it. I, I think it's going to be a really good fight, but I think Blockwood's keeps on rolling. There's no telling where this guy's going to end up. The date is set September 15th. The Argo Arena in Gdansk, Poland. KSW 20 Fighting Symphony. Find out more about the card and how to watch it at KSWMMA.com. Main event of the week comes from KSW. It's a Jan Blockwood's classic. Your MMA inside the cage. Main event of the week. De Janeiro, czarny pas brazylijskiego jiu-jitsu, człowiek, który walczył w UFC, może z niewielkimi sukcesami, ale za to z ogromnym doświadczeniem. A zatem zaczynamy test granatowy o żółte spodenki do Janek Błachowicz. Dlatego teraz Janek rozrywa i będzie polował. Tak jak teraz! Fantastycznie! Kapitalna seria w wykonaniu Błachowicza. Szkoda, że nie udało mu się chwycić głowy Mirandy i ściągnąć jej na kolano. Ale te ciosy i to kopnięcie i teraz pięknie na odejściu. Znów zawadził lewą i przestawił tam los Brazylijczyka z Rio de Janeiro. Ten odpowiada jak kopnięcia. Druga runda pojedynku w kategorii półciężkiej 93 kg między Janem Błachowiczem a Mario Mirando. O, dobry teraz od razu na początku drugiej rundy, lewy prosty Janka, jest podwrótkowy, jest kolejny high kick. Stara się bardzo często tym wysokim kopnięciem albo kopnięciem kierowanym na tłum rywala kończyć każdą kombinację Janek Płachowicz. O, porozbijany jest już Mario Miranda i on by chciał, pewno aby ta walka została przeniesiona do parteru, gdzie mógłby korzystać. Jeszcze dwa takie ciosy, 20 sekund, gdyby było obalenie to byliby Próbo już wszystkie... Próbował. Łachowicz, ręce szeroko, powinien podnieść je wyżej. Teraz on kopnął, tak, wykluczył kopnięcie ze strony Mirandy. Jeszcze jedno i middle kick i obrotówka i kręci. I pokazuje sędziom, że jest zawodnikiem lepszym. Janek Łachowicz w górę, kolanem, koniec tak walki. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by visiting MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and click Get On Air. Total destruction. Prepare for hell.
MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. And it's just about time to close it out, but let's go to your last four finalists for Clip of the Week. hasn't even started yet. Here it comes. <laughs> comes out swinging. Omelin, super aggressive right away. Big Williams right hand defending against knockout. the cage. Or drops him. Williams Counter on top. Fist there. Big left hand. And that's going to do it. Huge right hand counter. <laughs> Let's check them all out, all 12 clips in order for you to vote on for Clip of the Week. Now head to MMAinsideTheCageTV.com, get your votes in, and we'll deliver that prize pack from Elevation Training Mass, Gamma Labs, Film Harvest, Banff Five Gear, Versahi, and Hunter MMA straight to the winner. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on our YouTube channel for exclusive interviews, and send those videos in to MMAinsideTheCageTV.com. I'm Cyrus I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week. Inside, Inside the Cage. cage.